Happy Wednesday, friends. I hope that you are doing so well. Jumping on today to continue our conversation about getting started lifting weights. So as I mentioned, when I began the MatCon 20 Challenge, I got lots of questions from women who were trying to get into weightlifting for the first time and they weren't really sure where to start. So there's so much information out there um, and I wanted to make sure to give some really solid um info so that when you find a free workout plan on Pinterest, when you find a workout video that you want to do, you can make sure that you are following these lifting rules to make sure that you're maximizing um, your time working out to ensure that you see the results that you're working so hard for. So over the last couple of days, I have gone through the first two tips that I have for women who want to get started lifting weights. And now I'm going into the third one. And this one is actually top of mind for me because I went and took a workout class today um, at uh, Core Power Yoga. And it was the one where they incorporate weights with yoga. So super fun workout. However, what I was noticing is that almost every movement, with the exception for one, was an isolation exercise for a small muscle group. So think bicep curls. Think tricep extensions. We talked about this yesterday when we were discussing doing full body workouts. However, when it comes to your workout, um, what I see a lot of women doing that isn't necessarily great is that when they start lifting, they focus on the accessory lift. So they're focusing on um, smaller muscle groups. So we talked about bicep curls, tricep extensions, calf raises. And honestly, the reason that these exercises are not what I recommend isn't because they're bad. They're not bad exercises, they're not gonna hurt you, whatever. However, these are the muscle groups that are likely going to be shaped when you're doing full body or combination movements. So movements that are working multiple muscle groups at once. Um, you'll see me in almost every single one of my workouts, I'll program something like a squat and press, a lunge and press, a squat and row, or a lunge and row, because they're working so many different muscle groups at once. While isolation exercises might help tone up and strengthen some of your smaller muscle groups, they are not going to be increasing your metabolic rate, helping you burn major calories, or build metabolic tissue, aka muscle, to help change the shape of your body long term. So yes, you may get really really strong triceps by doing tricep extensions, but you will also work your triceps and your core and your chest if you're doing a really solid, strong push-up. So what I would love for you to think about today is instead of performing isolation movements, I want you to focus on the bigger muscle groups. So think your back, your core, your chest, your legs, for co and use combination movements whenever possible. So this is incorporating multiple movements into one, and I've already referenced four of my absolute favorites. Um, I'm going to add all of these videos to a blog in the next week, so you'll be able to link out to video demos of these exercises as well as workouts that put these combo moves into play. So what is so important about doing this is it will make a difference in your body shape. So if you start training with big muscle groups, the smaller muscle groups come along because our bodies don't work in isolation. When we're doing a squat, we are not just working our glutes. We're working our quads, we're working our calves, and we're working all of the little stabilizing muscles within our core to keep us upright. So in your next workout, take a look and try to understand what muscle group each exercise is working. If it's only targeting a small muscle group and you're not targeting your large muscle groups through isolation movements, it's time to make a change. If you have questions on that, definitely let me know. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow with your next tip.